Hello everyone and welcome to Code Tales. The little code we've written so far has worked fine to demonstrate file operations, but it didn't amount to a useful application. I think it's time we change that. We will start working on a project to help us put into context the things we've seen so far and also function as a platform we can use to discover new things. Something that is simple enough so it doesn't require a lot of knowledge about system internals to get started, but can be rich enough to lead us to new and interesting directions. And I think I have just a thing. A text editor. Everyone has experience with a text editor, so we don't need to spend time understanding what it's supposed to do. It edits text. But this is our text editor, so we can make it exactly the way that we want it. We can build it with a graphical user interface, or we can make it console-based. It can be modal or visual or whatever else we want to. How about a command-based editor? Something like said, perhaps, but interactive. That way, we can start with a simple user interface and implement commands as we need them, building up the complexity gradually without needing to do big revisions every time we change something. Commands let us have a modular design. Before we start the implementation, let's do a quick mock-up, just to get a feeling of what we're going to build. As a text editor, our application will need to do at least two things. Let us set the text and show us the text. Let's make these actions to separate commands. I'll call them set and show. Here's how I picture it to be used. The application will give me a prompt where I can enter commands, and the set command will set the contents to whatever follows it. The show command doesn't need arguments, it just prints whatever we've set the text to, so it would look something like this. So the interaction is a sequence of set and show commands. That is a very simple user interface, but it's enough to get us started. You probably noticed that this editor doesn't save the text anywhere, neither does it allow us to modify parts of the line. It also stores only one line. All of this is true. But the title of the video is the world's worst editor, so what did you expect? I promise though, we will fix all that. For now, we just need to get the basic design in place. Let's talk about the implementation. We have some pieces that are obvious. For instance, the commands. We will need to have the commands recognized by name and write the code that they have to execute. It will be nice if we keep them as separate as possible with minimal overlap, so when we add more, we don't have to worry about unexpected interactions. One place we know the commands will have to interact at is the memory where we store our string, the buffer. That will be used by both show and set, so they can read and modify it. It makes sense to think of it as a separate component, functioning as the shared state in the application. This gives a well-defined place to concentrate overlapping concerns and we know that when we are messing with it, we need to be extra careful. Finally, we'll need some way to read the commands the user gives us, parse them and execute them. Here we will also have to deal with invalid input and user errors. This is called the read-evaluate-print loop, which we will keep as simple as possible for now. Of course, before we write even a single line of code, we have to address what is probably the most important question. What shall we call our project? I think that since we have been inspired by said and we will write it in Rust, it would be a pity if we didn't name it Rusted. With the basic pieces identified, we can start writing code. Some parts are really easy to spot. The commands are straightforward to implement as an enum, one member per command, with the set command accepting an argument for the value it will use. Let's set that aside. For the buffer, we have many options but right now we don't need anything more complicated than a string. Strings in Rust are backed by a vector of bytes and allow us to read and modify that area of memory. Since we are only looking at character strings for the moment, that should work just fine. We will hide it behind the struct, though, so we can more easily change things in the future. For example, when we implement opening and saving to files, we can add our file handles there but the commands that don't care about files can continue using the rusted data struct only to access the buffer. That's the benefit of modular design that I mentioned earlier. We are just doing some basic software engineering here, keeping logic and state separate. Nothing extraordinary. Next, let's look at the implementation of commands. 
I will implement this as a method called dispatch that accepts the command that was read from the rep loop and the Rusty data state they will act on. A match block fits very nicely here, with each matching arm containing the logic of a command. This is effectively our logic acting on the program state. The set command carries its arguments already, so it will take it and put it in the buffer exactly like it's supposed to. The show command will take the buffer and print it on the console. The most complicated part of the application is the rep loop, so let's do that next. I will split it in three parts, reading the user input, parsing it, and using it. The first part is simple. We print out the prompt, then flush standard out because it gets flushed automatically only when we print a new line, and here we don't do that. Those two lines alone, by the way, could be a video on their own, since this behavior is the result of standard out being buffered. But let's try to stay on topic. Next, we allocate a string and read the line the user wrote, handling errors along the way. Once we get the user line, we need to parse it. In our two command grammar, commands always come first in the user input. Then, they may optionally be followed by a space and then their arguments. This means we have two basic cases to handle. One is when the input has spaces, and the other when it doesn't. When there is a space, we'll split the input on the first one. Whatever comes before that is the command, whatever comes after is its arguments. That takes care of the set command. And if there are no spaces, like for the show command, then we'll just assume the whole line is a command. That's what the if does here. First. We trim leading white space just to make life easier and the program a bit more robust. Then we see if there is any white space, and if so, we split and parse. Otherwise, we consume the whole line, which at this point is either just a single word or an empty string. Once we parse the command and its optional argument, we can just call dispatch with it. Here, we also handle the case where the command we parsed didn't match a command we know. Because we trim the white space at the start of the line, this is also conveniently covering the case of an empty line. And we're left with implementing the from string and from option methods on the command enum, and here they are. The work we did in parsing makes the whole thing quite simple. I've also included a toString method that can be used in debugging, but it's not used in the code right now. We'll just need a bit of support code to have a fully functional program the exit utility method and a simple main loop. Put all these together and you get exactly the behavior we designed at the start. It can even deal with weird user input, like all spaces. It also maintains any surrounding white space in the argument of set, so it doesn't lose any characters. Rusted is extremely basic at this point. It barely even rises to the standards of a student project. But whenever I see modular design like the commands we implemented here, I think of the potential for extensibility. What other commands can we add? And what interactions do they require? How far can we push the design before it breaks and how do we fix that? We have a few obvious gaps we need to fill. Save and load from files stands out and it would be nice if we could edit the line we've set. In the next video we'll implement some of these and start getting a better design in place. What would you do differently here? What commands would you implement next? Write your ideas in the comments and, of course, subscribe so you can see how our small program evolves. I hope you found this interesting and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.